Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, here I'm going to give you an overview of circuits with sinusoidal sources. We're not actually going to solve this circuit, but what I want to do is draw a simple circuit uh, with a resistor and an inductor, very simple circuit, on the board with an AC source. And I'm going to take you through some logic and kind of explain to you why this is a little more complicated than it initially sounds uh, to actually solve by hand. What I'm doing here is I'm going to illustrate the problems that associated with AC analysis, and I'm going to draw some conclusions so you can get some intuition, uh, even without solving the problem, of what to expect. So I'm setting up the problem, I'm setting up the conundrum, right, of AC analysis and why it's a little more difficult than you would initially think. In the next section, I'm going to introduce what we call the phaser. I've mentioned it before. The phaser is a technique, a mathematical technique, uh, where we can basically change what the circuit looks like in the real domain to what we call the phaser domain. We, we change the representation of the circuit a little bit. It makes it easier to work with uh, mathematically so that we can solve the problem um, without a bunch of really messy, messy math. Now you are going to have to use complex numbers, but trust me, that's a whole lot easier than what I'm about to show you right now. So let me just jump into it. I want to go ahead and draw a quick uh, guy on the board. So let's say there's some voltage source. Now this voltage source is going to end up being a sinusoid, obviously. Here's a switch, here is a resistor, and here is an inductor. So this is probably one of the simplest circuits you could imagine, um, and you'll see yet how complicated it is. So here's the inductor, here is the resistor, um, here is the current that we're saying is flowing that direction, and here is T is equal to zero. Um, now, for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to tell you the source, V sub S, is a function of time, and it's exactly what we've been talking about before, Vm cosine of omega t plus phi. Now, these can be real numbers, obviously, if I build this thing, I'm going to have a real amplitude, a real frequency, and a real phase angle, but you've got to sort of envision, even though it says plus and minus here, it's something I want to point out real quick, it's really oscillating back and forth in terms of voltage. The current is also going back and forth, as we've mentioned, but when you draw your pictures, you have to pick a reference direction and you're gonna, we're gonna end up using, um, you know, we write our Kirchhoff voltage law down the road, we write our Kirchhoff current law, and we do node voltage and mesh current. You have to pick a reference direction, so what you do is you say, okay, this is plus and minus, and the current is going that way. We know that the, everything's oscillating, we know that. But you don't take that into consideration. You have to pick some direction when you write all of your equations. As long as you're consistent among all of your equations, you'll get the right answer. So we write it down as if the current's going this way and as if the voltage is arranged this way.